Welcome to Bass Talk, presented by Z-Man Tackle. I'm Jason Menninger, FLW Tour Bass Pro. And today, folks, is all about our Z-Fans. And with us today, we have a very special guest. He's our very first Z-Fan of the year, Mr. Chase Lyle. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Chase, you're coming yes, all the way from Greenbrier, Tennessee. How you doing today? Good. How are you? Excellent. Congratulations. You won the very first Z Fan of the Year contest. And I might say you did it with one heck of a fish. I guess it was 11.2 pounds. Yes, sir. Incredible fish. And um, tell us a little bit about the fish. You caught that in, 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 uh, in Texas, I believe. I don't know where in Texas, but why don't you let us know and tell us about that day and, and how it all happened. And, and uh, we're excited to learn a little bit about this. Um, actually, I was. It was caught in San Angelo, Texas, on Lake Nasworthy. Okay. I was actually down there for uh, Air Force school for six months. Um, luckily, I got moved to the night shift, which left days open for fishing and other outdoor things. I shot a little while I was down there. Um, luckily, my supervisor from work was down there at the same time, and he actually took his boat down there. And he's big time fisherman. Cool. Uh, usually up here, that's the gentleman that I always go with. Um, it was one afternoon. Actually, I had no luck all day. We'd been out for about four or five hours. Sure. And I think I caught one little, maybe a pound. And he was pulling them in all day. Uh, end of the day, we finally made it to uh, one last. It was an old abandoned dock. And actually, the week prior, he caught a nine and a half and a ten and a half out of the same hole in the same day. Really? Yes, sir. I'm actually trying to get him to put in for this next round because he's got some good pictures of those fish. I bet. Um, but it's like I say, I spent all day getting hung up. It was a grass bottom lake, yeah. so I spent all day hung up in the grass. It was had to be a class at six. It was about three thirty in the afternoon, and that was going to be our last cast. Because yeah. honestly, I was frustrated. I was ready to ready to be done. <laughs> um, and sure enough, last cast cast up right beside the dock. And actually, under the dock, it kind of dropped off yeah. into the channel. And it felt like a good hit, went to set the hook, and it was just like my rod froze. <laughs> and I said a few choice words. Um, I told John, I said, hey, we've got we got to troll over there. I'm hung because I was actually, I'd done, nested up my bait caster. It was my first bait cast. <laughs> it was already nested up, lost all the line off it. Yeah. So I was actually using my supervisors. Um and sure enough, about the time that he was going to troll over there, the the rod tip just kind of started slowly started to go back and forth. And he said, "You're not hung. That's a fish." That's a big fish. So it took me a, a good 12, 15 minutes to get it in because really? it actually wow. only had about 12 pound test line on the rod. So he kind of went into coach mode. You know, okay, reel. Okay, stop. Okay, reel. <laughs> and when he finally got it up next to the boat. She kind of came up and turned on her side, and I think I was in shock. He was ten times more excited than me at the time. That's funny. Uh, he jumped in basically with the net in one hand, and he was shoulder deep in the other. He said, I ain't letting this fish go, and finally got it in the boat, and when he put it on the scale, it said 11.2, and I, it, it took about an hour for it to set in with me because I think he was the one jumping up and down on the boat, and... I was just in shock. So now you caught that fish on a chatter bait, which is a great bait to throw when you've got you know grass on the bottom. The bait comes through grass nicely, and you know it's it's a big profile bite. So a, these bigger fish, like you caught, you know, that's a perfect bait for that kind of situation. So yes, sir. What color did you throw that on? It was a chartreuse and white original chatter bait. Was the uh, was the water color dingy, or was it uh, what was what kind of water clarity did you have? Um. It was slightly dingy, but it was it was decently clear. Sure. Had a green tint to it. Sure. Okay. But that dock must have been a premium dock. I mean, if he's caught other nine and ten pounders on there, and you catch an eleven, that's that's a sweet spot. That's one you don't want to tell anybody about exactly where that dock is. <laughs> well, we didn't want to, but he was my direct supervisor, and just so happens his direct supervisor, actually the chief superintendent of our squadron, was down there. So I think they went back about every day and hit that spot because yeah. chief was upset that I caught it on all of his gear. He, sure. he thought he should get some credit. So <laughs> well, yeah, that that makes sense. It's not bad to share amongst your amongst your superiors. That's for sure. 
though. Yes, gotta keep, sir. You got to keep those guys happy. Hey, we, one thing I do want to say is we really appreciate your service. I know it's really important for us here to for our, our freedoms and um, all that you guys do is it's it's a big thing. So we're 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 uh, we're blessed to have you guys working for us. Now you're in the the Air National Guard. Yes, sir. And um, what what are your day to day responsibilities? Why don't you let it, let everybody know at home that I know fishing is kind of what you love to do and it's fun and it's probably a break from you uh, from your your day to day activities. But but let us know at home kind of kind of the things that you have to do on a, on a daily and monthly basis to to help protect our interest here in in, in, in this great country we live in. Well, actually, I'm actually uh, in a logistics squadron. Um, actually, kind of a computer guru. I'm actually in IT, so sure. nothing too exciting to explain there. Important stuff, uh, though. But okay. I have drill once a month, and then also full time. I'm a civilian technician out there, so I'm out there Monday through Friday. Good. So basically, computer support for the squadron. Well, I mean, everybody's job responsibility. I know sometimes they don't sound very glamorous, but everything you guys do is very important and critical for our safety. So we we certainly appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit a little bit more bass fishing. So, are you a big bass fishing fan? I mean, do you follow the the, the BASS tour and the FLW tours and those kind of things? Not as much as I'd like to. I am a huge. That's my dad. He's the big crappie fisherman, and okay. I like it. But he goes almost every weekend during the seasons, but. And he don't like to go with me because all I want to do is bass fish, especially since down there. Yeah. Um, I grew up bass fishing with my father, and then it kind of it tapered off when I joined the military, got a little older. And now that I'm getting that age, I want to get back into it. So sure. I've been trying to go about once a week with my supervisor at work. He'll bring his boat into work, and usually we'll try to hit the lake about 3.30 and come off at dark. So yeah, that's not cool. as much as I'd like to, but... Well, I mean, you get out once a week or twice a week, that's pretty good. That's 100 days a year. So you're yes, you're certainly avid, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, not a lot of people can, can say they've caught a, a double-digit bass. So, I mean, and that's, that's, a, that's quite an accomplishment. Um, what about some of the bass pros out there? Who's your favorite bass pro? It'd have to be David Walker just because he's a... He's a local Tennessee boy. He's the man. Too. You know, Walker, and, and not a lot of guys know. You've really, if you got to know your bass fishing if you know David. But, but he's one of those guys who's probably one of the most consistent anglers. You know, he's a Hall of Famer to be. I mean, this guy is his one. Um, he's won a ton of you know local events, and and he's he's won. Uh, he just got his first major BASS win that it's been taking him you know his whole career to get. Um, and he's won on the FLW tour. He's he's had Angler of the Year, and I know he's he's in number two, I think, right now, number two or three for for uh, uh, on the BASS Elite Series. And he'd love to take home that Angler of the Year. But he's probably, I guess, he's had more top tens than than you know. He's right up there with Kevin Van Dam in that in that sector. I know Kevin's won more than he has, but but this guy is is probably in in I you'd have to put him in the top five guys in the sport. And uh, he's just a great guy and. He's easy to be around, and um, he's very humble, and um, and he's great for the sport of bass fishing. So he's he's definitely definitely a good fan to have, no doubt about it. So what uh, what are your if you had to rank your the the top three bass fisheries? I'll say the top one. I mean, give me your top one or two bass fisheries in the country that that you haven't fished but you want to fish. Where do you want to go? Actually, when I was down there, I was dying to go to Lake Fork, but I never could get on that trip. Uh, okay. It was always my supervisor and the superintendent get to go, um, so I'd love to go fish Lake Fork. Actually, uh, that's where I'm, the little taxidermy place down there is where I'm going to have the, the the mount done. I, I released cool. her, um, nice. but I went and had her officially measured and weighed pictures, so I'm going to have a, a replica made. Yeah, that's a great way to do it. And we let that fish go back. Yeah, I think Texas has one of those programs, too, where... I think it's called either release a lunker or something where they'll actually they'll they'll take those fish and um, and I guess they use them for you know to, to breed and then uh, and then they'll go and uh, and it'll help you know with the, the you know making sure there's good genes in some of the other fisheries along the state so I don't, did you take advantage of that too that particular program or uh, we wanted to but it's like I say it was the last cast of the day sure. and when you're in a military school they don't take too much for you being late or skipping yeah, out no. especially <laughs> fishing but that is something that I wanted to do. We just yeah. we didn't have the time to get the guys there because yeah. I think I said it'd take them about two hours to get there. Sure, sure. 
Sure. And we just didn't have the time, but I did want to take advantage of that. Well, you did put her back in. That's that's great. You know, a lot of guys would probably would take that fish and, and, and get it mounted. When, but really, you know, they don't really use a whole lot of the fish anyway. It's just, I guess it's the skin they take off of there, and they don't really use a whole lot. So it's kind of a waste to, to go and, and, and to not, you know, if you're going to get a mount to to, uh, to do it the other way. So. Yeah, I think my dad would have been pretty angry because he's the one, whatever you catch, put Keep, it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I know. That's good. Good. Well, you know what? We uh, we really appreciate your time here today, and um, it's been great getting to know you. And I want you to keep. Uh, I, there's probably a 12 pounder in there in that lake. It sounds like that lake's full of big fish, and I know there's probably a 12 or a 13 pounder in there. Yeah, I want to see. There is a 12. A 12.1 was the lake record, and it was caught the year before I caught that fish. Wow. Uh, I think a 12 or a 14-year-old boy. Well, hopefully hopefully he released that fish. I'd like to see you catch that fish, and I'd like to see you win fan of the year again. So. Well, I'm going back down there in August, so you better believe I'm going to be back out on that same dock. <laughs> well, hey, congratulations again, and thank you so much for your service again. It really means a lot to us, and it's been great to have you here on Bass Talk. We love talking bass fishing here. That's what we do. And it sounds like you love bass fishing. So, um, again, congratulations, and thanks so much for your time and your service. And, and have fun on the water, and uh, make sure you catch that 12-pounder next year. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chase. We appreciate it, buddy.